welcome to Kid Missing TV. We are in the middle of Murderous March. This case is Vera Isabel Minnie Page. This case takes us all the way back to 1931. To Notting Hill, England. I actually think it's part of London. Correct me if I'm wrong. Vera Page was found raped and strangled in some scrubland off of Addison Road in Notting Hill. Um, a man who was commonly believed to be her killer was questioned, but there was not enough evidence against him other than a bandage that could have come off his sore finger that he was missing, and which was said to have been found on Vera Page's dead was also seen in the area with a wheelbarrow and something suspicious in it around the time the body would have been placed. Okay. She was covered in coal dust and it is believed that the murder took place in the cellar near where her beret was later found and then transported to the area off of Addison Road. She lived with her parents on the Lenheim Crescent in Ladbrook Grove, where they occupied a basement and ground floor. After she came home from school on the 14th of December, 1991, when this happened, she left to go see her aunt at number 78 of the same street, 300 yards away. She went there to collect some swimming certificates that she had left there the day before saying that she would be back soon because she was hungry. She arrived at 4.30 and got the certificates and left by 4.45, saying she was going home to tea. Tea is supper. Um, over there. However, she never made it. She was seen by a schoolgirl walking back toward her home just before five. She was then seen by a little boy that knew her quite well, and then seen by another little girl that was looking into the window of a chemist's shop situated at the junction of Portobello Road and her street, when I'm crescent. Portobello Road is kind of famous. Um, after that, she vanished until 6.30. When she was seen at 6.30 by a sailor, although it was thought that he might have been mistaken in who he saw. After the, uh, she was next seen at 8.45 by a man on Montpelier Road. He said that he saw her on the right-hand side of the road, walking toward Lansdowne Crescent. The man said that when he got up to Lansdowne, he looked around and saw that Vera had disappeared. He said that he had seen her walking up toward the crescent on the right-hand side of the road, swinging her red beret in her hand, and said she evidently turned either right or left on Lansdowne Road. It is thought if, if he was, if he did in fact see her, he was the last person to see her before she was abducted. Um... She was found on the 18th of December, 1931. Oh my goodness, did I say 1991? Nineteen thirty-one. What an idiot. I'm sorry, guys. Um, she had been manually strangled by hand. Um, but they put a cord around her neck after her death. She had also been violated, probably, by a hand. Oh. That was more than we needed to know. She was digitally raped. Ew! Did we really need to know that much detail? And there were two or three, um, her beret was missing, which they found later. She had two or three spots of candle grease on her right shoulder, just under her overcoat, and in the crook of her right elbow. The police found a finger stool, which consisted of a 
piece of bandage and a piece of lint. It'd been drawn off the finger by the man who placed her there. And it was the only clue. I wonder if they still have the bandage. If they could do DNA on it. Um, I know they don't like doing the familial DNA over there. There's a whole issue with it over there. See George's channel if you want to know more about that. Um, <clears throat> but in this case, I would think that they would want to do it. Um, like I said, they're not big into familial DNA over there. <laughs> They have privacy issues and things over there that we don't have here. Um, oh boy. Um, now, a finger stool is an old term for a bandage. It would have been a I think it would have been more of a cap bandage. So say I had an injury like right here or right in my crook, they would put a cap style bandage over. You know, if I had an injury in here somewhere, they put a cap over it. Style bandage. You must have seen those style bandages. Well that's I believe what they're talking about. My friends in the UK, if I'm wrong, let me know. But, but we had them here in the US, too. Um, Handle wax. Um, her family said she was very shy and not likely to speak or go, speak to or go with anyone she didn't know. So, police think that the person lived locally and that she knew him. They took thousands of statements. The whole district was combed. <clears throat> they interviewed everyone she knew with what they call in quotes, well, I'm quoting it, the greatest of care. <clears throat> and only one of them was found to be wearing a finger stool, which he had been wearing on the little finger of his left hand. Okay, now it says finger stall. So yeah, not finger stool, finger stall. Huh. Okay, the finger stall, and I was right by the way. A man with, um, in a, employed in a laundry, he's a flannel washer, whatever that means. Um, the finger stall, which is what it should have said in the first place, which is exactly what I said it was. It's a cap. Um, had pus on it. Ew. Gross. That means the cut that the perpetrator had was infected. And it, it said that the man that was interviewed that also had a finger stall that it smelled of ammonia. I'm not sure why? Unless they cleaned it that way? Ooh. But, um, it was
first he's trying to say he wasn't wearing a bandage on the day of the accident. Um, her beret was found on Stanley Crescent, which is just off uh, where she was last seen. They believe the murderer took her where he took her because he knew there was a, a cellar. Okay. The oddly, the bandages and lint and whatnot that the man's wife had and the, evidently that he had on his pinky did not match what was found on Vera. That's weird. Okay, I'm going to give you some idea of distances because somebody was nice enough to figure it out for me. Um, very close. 128 Talbot Road to 22 Blenheim Crescent, that's where she lived, 176 yards. 89 Addison Road to Talbot Road, 1 mile, 134 yards. Talbot Road to Avonmore Road, 2 miles, 468 yards. Uh, 23 Stanley Crescent to 89 Addison Road, 1,872 yards. 22 Blenheim to 78 Blenheim, 326 yards. Um, so we still don't know who killed this little girl. It is weird that he had a finger stall on, but it turned out that it didn't match. Excuse me. And it is possible that his smelled like ammonia because he was, he worked at a cleaner's, at a laundry. So, who knows? And if he had a finger stall on, which, which was, would cover most of the pinky, how would you know it was discharging unless it was actually coming through the, bleh, the bandage? That's disgusting, first of all. I apologize for that. Ugh. But it's necessary, you know? Sometimes you talk about things that are difficult. And stomach churning, quite honestly. Um, thank you for joining me, though. I don't have a phone number in that case because it's so old. Um, some of these cases I don't have phone numbers for because, again, they're old. Uh, some I do. The next case will take us back to 1925. So I hope you'll join me for that. I will see you then. God bless you. Please click subscribe if you're new and click that bell. Please like, share, comment. Stuff you already do. Thank you. Bye guys.